welcome back to a new episode of Ride Along. Today, we are going to meet Andrew Ahura, the Managing Director of Cord Air Records. He's a composer, an audio engineer, and a producer, doing some amazing things in the music and film industry in Uganda, as well as creating a unique sound in Kampala. Come on, let's go meet him. I'd like to welcome Andrew to this uh, ride along with me. Andrew, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> yes, um, just tell us, I introduced you as a sound engineer, as an audio engineer, composer, <laughs> uh, <laughs> producer. producer. Just try to explain to us exactly what you do. I, I do... I do many things, mm. and part of the things that um, I do is composing of music. Um, there, there are many things that we do in this industry, and the industry I'm talking about is um, the entertainment industry. In the entertainment industry, we have film and we have the music sector. Mm. So in the music sector, I do production. Uh, um, production is... Uh, making an artist um, from when they come to studio we record them and make sure that their music is great and, and that people can enjoy the music so those are some of the things that we do in, in terms of the music industry then in the film industry um, I do I do composing of music that's making music for film and TV um, then I also do what they call audio post-production um, uh, with audio post-production, it entails many different things, but just making sure that the movie comes to life in this audio spectrum. Um, I also um, manage uh, Quad Air Records. Uh, Quad Air Records is the company that I work with. How long have you been doing this, like this music and sound and audio kind of production? How long have you been doing this? Since the time I can remember when I was young, I always had love for music. Um, but professionally, I think I started in 2000. Um, professionally, starting to play on the national stage. stage. And yeah. then you were with... Uh, Milege. Milege band. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I've known you for a while. Yeah. And I remember the amazing things we used to see when we were in fellowship. And I, I think, I don't know if it was a rumor, it was true that you taught yourself how to play keyboard. Like you didn't have any formal training to begin. Okay, I didn't have any formal play, uh, training, but uh, my brother, my mm. brothers actually had some form of knowledge about music and especially the keyboard. Yeah. So they they taught me where to touch. Yeah. Uh, touch here, touch here, you it will make sense. Yeah. So from there, the keyboard was the first instrument that I learned. And if I'm advising anyone, if you want your um, your child or your friend to learn how to play an instrument they should start with the piano the piano opens up um, the mind uh, to to what music really is in yeah. its mathematical and scientific formats um, you can learn a lot from a piano so the piano is what i began with yeah so from there you mm. went to on to play with milege yeah so um, and then for milege like how did was sound producing and audio engineering already a thing or it was just you were just a keyboard um at that point i really loved to produce so um my my my, my journey with playing um started at church yeah. i started playing in church a lot i think you still play right yeah, for 930 service, 930 yeah. service yes, yes. Yeah. i still do but um i started at church uh, in early 2000s um playing in the service started by playing in fellowships so that really grew my the, the spectrum of music when you're now experiencing and playing it live with other people and with a group with a team so I started growing and loved uh, wanted to learn how to produce uh, music uh, like for people on radio mm -hmm. so slowly I started learning how to produce and make music teaching myself uh, then uh, at that time, uh, I think, I, I, don't, I don't remember the year, but I was fortunate to meet a gentleman called Mr. Victor Orintho. Victor Orintho. Orintho. Yes. Yeah. Taught me the basics of production studio. He's a producer as well? He's a producer as well. He's the one who produced um, this song of Isaiah Katuma, My Joy. Okay. Um, so from there, he, he kept on teaching me and giving me gigs. 
on 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 uh, producing some artists that he had at that time, but instead of him producing them, he would give them to me. Um, so I started learning, of course, making mistakes here and there, but slowly started, you know, developing the the art form. Uh, then I joined uh, Milege uh, at that time. That was in 2008, and started getting the experience of playing in a band. <laughs> so from there, at that point, at that point, live live instrumentation. So I was coming up with ideas, sharing them with the team. The team could come up with ideas. We we break down the things together and we had opportunities to play at that time at the loans with a regular it was a regular gig so people would come and just watch us play man i think i was there every thursday, every thursday. <laughs> yeah it was thursday so it was like plot <laughs> yes so from that time i felt that the vision changed mm. uh for me uh and and you did some concerts as well as yeah we did some concerts and they used to really be well attended concerts yes people yeah. people came we were we were actually fortunate at that time <laughs> But at that point, uh, the calling changed for me to start um, Quad Air Records. Now, Quad Air Records had already been there. The idea was already there yeah. from since 2000. But it hadn't yet uh, materialized, come, come out, in, so to speak. Yeah. So in 2012, it was officially registered as an entity. And incorporated so what are some of the major works like or film or that you're proud of like work that you've done i know you're proud of all the work you've done but what are like some highlights you can give us for like either movies we have watched or uh songs we have listened to like popular songs that you have worked with okay so um first of all i think isaiah katuma is one of uh, one of very good people i've worked with um one because he's unique in his talent and but also that his music appeals to to many and what songs are those you worked with um, the, album. the album that i did uh, together with him was this is me mm -hmm. then we did a couple of live recordings together with him of his previous concerts like the concert in 2012 we did a concert in 2013 mm -hmm. and also then i was very a privilege to work with uh, the late Huma Sekela. Um, the time that we spent together, it was it was it was a short time, but learnt a lot in terms of musicianship and what it means to work and For to work. Uh, don't know who he is. Maybe um, Huma Sekela, the late, is a legend. Was a legend, mm -hmm. um, and he used to play the cornet. He was very instrumental during the days of apartheid and used music uh, as a platform to change, to bring change in South Africa. So did you work on a song with him or a live, or a live performance? Those were the live performances with him. Mm. Um, so getting to practice with him, getting to um, put uh, mix the show, getting to put the whole show together, mix it back in studio, and then making a DVD. Um, oh, so that, that was with Huma Sekela. Then I've also worked with, uh, in the film industry, a gentleman called Matt Bish, uh, who released a movie called Bella. Um, then also, we've worked on a couple of TV series. Mm. The first one is NSSF Friends with Benefits. Yeah. Um, one of the, I think the first of its kind, mm. um, because it's a Ugandan, it's a Ugandan product uh, produced by Ugandans and with a corporate entity, yeah. that's 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 kind of rare. Yeah. Um, but o also um, th th with the level of production, um, I think it's one of the things we're very proud of at Quad Air Records. Then the other one I will talk about is probably um, we worked with Sandra Subi. You did on Queen of Katwe, didn't you? Oh yes, oh yes. That's uh, major. Th that's that like Lupita <laughs> major. <laughs> Which yes. song did you do with him? It's called Number One Spice. It was the main track. That Which artists good. were those who sang that song? Um, so those, um, the artist's name is Young Kadamom and Hub. Uh, those, they, they are, they, are, they were pretty new to the Ugandan scene, mm -hmm. but they had done work before. The association with, I think, the director, the associated to the director, mm -hmm. and they got the opportunity to do the, 
the song. So when the opportunity came, they came to us and yeah. um, we produced the beat and made mixed it, and people loved it. Uh, we got Alicia Keys say that man this song when I hear this song I just want to keep dancing and it's inspired her in sort of a way to write that she wrote a song um, in uh, in in the movie so we were very happy to hear such feedback from the director um, yeah. who told us about the Alicia Keys experience so those are some of the That's things amazing. yeah and what what is the, like what is your vision you said your vision changed to Cold Air Records mm. But what is that vision that you see yourself in a few years or you see your company going towards? What's the big vision? So in Uganda right now, um, to make it, to, to, to say that you have made it, mm -hmm. you either have to be an engineer, you have to be a lawyer, <laughs> you have to be the doctor. And that's how we were brought up. Yeah. But many a times, the creative people, anyone who is in the art industry, it's like well, they're wasting time. So we we want to rebrand Uganda through sound. That's 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 the headline. Rebranding Uganda through sound. And do you have a unique sound you want? Or we want to export our country's culture. Our country is full. We have over fifty-two tribes. 52 so you want tribes. to export fifty-two cultures? Yes. Not necessarily fifty-two. Cultures. I mean that that um, we are part of the force. I mean, there's a, f a movement going on. I mean, different producers are doing it, incorporating culture. I mean, there's a song Nanduja released. My goodness, it was very very good. It was talking about how girls need to dress. It, need, it was talking about uh, girls having manners. Very very good. But it was done with um, the 21st century touch. Mm. You, you you get what I mean? And that was part of exporting. Um, the culture. So um, we are part of a force that is trying to do this. And we believe that Quad Air Records is not just, we, we don't want to say we're just going to export all the cultures, but we want to, to show the world what Uganda is really about, um, how colorful we are, how hospitable we are, um, how rich we are with. It's like when you hear some songs and you know. This must be a Nigerian song. A Nigerian song. So you want, like, when you hear it, you're like, this must be a Ugandan song, kind of. Yes. On an international scale. On an international scale. Though, it, it's, it's right now, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of hard. Mm. Um, because when I see, like, Nigeria or South Africa, they have, like, sort of a common language. And I, I think Luganda is going to be that common thing. Because you can go, you can go up in the north. People are speaking. And people are speaking I Uganda. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yes, Uganda yes, you can. Now. You can go to uh, Masindi mm. and people are talking in Luganda. Go to Kigali. If you don't, if they still don't speak in Yaranda, they all turn to Luganda and you're like... Yes. Uh, so Luganda is becoming the thing. Mm. So if, if, that is, if that is something that the country is going to identify itself, it would be easier for us to adapt it in films to adapt it in the music and package it for the world to see. I'm a Munyoro, mm. but why I, 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 I love the Buganda culture, it has so much very positive cultural um, upbringings of values mm. that, they, that they teach their children when they're young, mm. respecting parents and, and all those kinds of different values, you know, that is good for the young generation that is coming. Mm. So um, we want to export our Ugandanness. Um, many things define our who we are in terms of our behavior, uh, our beliefs, what we, uh, what our ideologies, our attitude towards um, many different things. So we believe that if we incorporate all those different things together, mm. we can come up with something good that we can package for both the film industry but also for the audio industry. How the Nigerians have done it. How, how has it been owning, a, having a company in Uganda, like um, not being formally employed? Like what challenges do you face in terms of just running a business? Because as much as you have these passions, you have to run a business, you have to turn a profit. What challenges do you face running your business here in Uganda? 
Well, <laughs> tax. <laughs> uh-huh. Not, but, no, but, but, as in make it specific to like maybe the music industry or something. Okay, maybe tax. Yeah, maybe I mean, tax. yeah. Um, um, like for example, um, when Queen of Katwe came to shoot, the tax that was asked for Queen of Katwe was too much mm. that these guys went to South Africa to shoot some of the scenes that could have been shot in Uganda. See, I remember seeing, reading about that of how, I'm like, why didn't they shoot this thing in Katwe? Yeah, They had exactly. to go to South Africa to shoot a Ugandan scene. It was ridiculous. It was really ridiculous. Now, if the ta- taxes are very high, but you're getting something from them, like, for example, you're getting uh, medical insurance, um, like you can walk in um, with, and because you pay tax, and national, insurance. national insurance. I mean, when you have very many good benefits with high tax, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. You get what I mean? So, um, the, 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 I mean, you have to pay KCCA, you have to pay all these different entities. I mean, to bring in a drone, you, you have to first pay some money somewhere, to bring in equipment, you have to pay customs. As in, there's, 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 some, there's so many things that are blocking us from developing and, and developing a special... Because if all these things were accessible, it would be very easy for us to develop um, very quickly. So tax is one of them. The other thing that could be challenging is um, probably uh, our... The, the, the world is developing very fast in terms of internet. Internet is, is a very, very 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 big problem because now we're getting global and sometimes you need to work with people in another country and you need to send in very huge files now who have skype meetings who have ah. skype meetings and those files are, are say 50 gb now the data plan here right now is 30 gb you have to pay like 300,000 or you have to and then when you look at it in terms of return on investment mm. The money that you're going to get from that job, you're just going to put it in internet and put it in uh, many other different things, and you don't make so much uh, profit. So, internet and is quite quite a challenge. And I think I don't know, but I think we are now way to the companies are on their way to make better uh, packages for us. I hope. I hope. <laughs> um, I hope. The other thing is finding people who are very passionate to work with. Because at the end of the day, you can't work alone. Mm. You need to work as a team. Mm. This is an effort. It's, it's, it's an effort um, with working with many people. Um, you, you have to find like-minded people mm. who are willing to sacrifice. Now, the music industry is not yet where it's supposed to be. Mm. There, are many, uh, there are many steps that we need to take. And there are many sacrifices that need to be made so that we can grow the industry. So... Finding people who are willing to take that sacrifice sometimes is very hard Um, because you go through months when uh, there's no project, you can go through months when there are very many projects but there there are no people to do them. Mm. So it's it's varying. It's not like um, um, when when you're sure that there is a there is there is a job at the end of you know, a retainer, and so some of those things working towards a retainer are some of the things that we're planning uh, on doing and, and making uh, making products for people so that th- we are able to stay on a retainer and have a stable income income coming in. Income coming in. It's uh, a very unstable industry. Yes, that's for sure. That's that, that's because sometimes uh, people are not uh, paid, and this is the other thing, another challenge. When you go and you have you have invested all this equipment, mm. you have um, managed to pay all those taxes to bring in the equipment, you have done all those different things. Mm. Then when you put a price tag on your product, people are like, man, you're so expensive, we can't afford that. And rightly so, because... Um, Why shouldn't you be expensive? Yeah, this is the thing. When they send, they, when they take the, the, the work mm. um, and they take it wherever they're going to get artists are not making money from the music industry you actually have to pay radio stations for your song to get played wow. yeah in the states you get paid for every time your song is played you know so our industry is, is not very um is not encouraging and that's why people cannot pay a premium for such a service you know
know so they're very the, the, the industry is very young but which is very good for us because it's an opportunity to grow together with it yeah so those, those are some of the challenges of it if i can just think of it what, uh, what advice would you give for someone who's a young producer, they're just starting out, like how you are starting out, and maybe they don't know where to start, like what's, what's some advice you'd give them? One, you have to have passion. Mm. Passion. I always keep on saying it. Passion is what is going to drive you in this industry, especially in Uganda. Mm. Uh, because sometimes you'll meet, you'll have many challenges, but because of the passion that you have, if, you, if you're sure you don't have passion, please don't start because you're going to get discouraged along the way. There are many things to discourage you, but passion is what keeps you going. Yeah. So you have to be very passionate about what you're going to do mm. and about the industry. Then the other thing, you have to have a very clear vision with what you want to achieve. Do you just want to be a producer and die just producing music? Is that your, is that your vision? Is it, just for the love of music. You have to have something that drives you every morning. Mm -hmm. You have to have a vision. You have to know where you're going as a, an individual. What's the purpose of, um, of why you were created to do that music? So you have to engraft that into um, your vision and have passion. And then, of course, make a lot of research. Read. Get, don't, 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 um, don't rely on talent. Um, I, 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 I thought that talent can That's make it, talent. but my, my friend, there are standards. Mm. If you want to go international, there are standards. Yep. The world has standards, yes. I mean, you cannot just hand in um, a song that is badly mastered or hand in a movie that is distorting. Or, I mean, there are standards. And, and if you, to, to know those standards, you have to study. You have to research. You have to read. You have to know um, what the standards are and what you need to do. To achieve those standards so reading and research mm. and uh, probably getting a degree certified it's quite expensive by the way it's quite expensive to get a degree in uh, music production um, from a very um, legitimate uh, <laughs> uh, school mm. yeah very very expensive so as we come to a close yeah I want you to tell us what's the vision what's the what does the future look like for Code A? Uh, you've done film, you've done music. So what next? Like, what do you want to conquer? What are you entering in? Like, what should we expect from Code A Records in the future? Code A Records is going to be um, a hub. It's going to be like the the place where people come to, you know, get professional services in uh, in, in those two industries in terms of film, in terms of. Uh, the music industry, the entertainment industry. We want to be a hub um, that people don't need to fly to the UK or fly to South Africa to get very excellent services. You just need to come to Quadri Records. So, and also we want to make sure that we can create, that when a child is growing up, mm. Linda, when your child grows up, your children can say, I want to become a, a sound engineer. Like Ahura. <laughs> no, not like Ahura. Mm -hmm. I just want to become a sound engineer. And there is an avenue to teach them. Mm. And there's an avenue to train them and mm. give them that experience. So we want to create that opportunity and also change the notion that Aba Dongo, Aba, Aba mus the, the musicians don't understand what they're doing. They are, they're gone case. We want to change that attitude of that uh, the, the musicians don't know what they're doing. Uh, or they're just wasting time. We want to make sure that our country appreciates the art form mm. and can support it, and people make a living out of doing music. Mm. You know, so we want to see a better Uganda. That's the, that's that's what is driving us right now. We want to see a better Uganda and and put a professionalism on the music industry. So when you become a sound engineer, tell you what. Mm. In the States right now, a sound engineer gets in a year about a hundred, between a hundred to eighty thousand US dollars per year. That's, that's earning like um, um, uh, our the, my MD of NSSF. Yeah. That's, that's how much a sound engineer is, is earning. And, and other guys get even more. 
composers are earning in millions of US dollars on a project. Now, like the guy who did Black, Black Panther, the guy who scored Black Panther, after the guys have realized they're billions, they're getting money from royalties, they're getting money from the down payments. It's, 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 a, it's a fruitful industry. So we want to see an industry and we want to be part of um, the effort to make that reality come true in our country yeah. and in Africa as a general because we, we can't work as a country independent. We have to work with our neighbors. We have to get work from Nigeria. We have to get work from South Africa. Uh, so we want to collaborate. With we want to collaborate more. And we want to see change in perception of the music and film industry in this country mm. and make careers out of them. I wish you well. Thank you. Um, I want to thank Ahura for joining us. We will be put. I'll put his information below um, on the description, so you can see where to get him, where he's located, and just how to contact him in case you're interested. Uh, but thank you, Andrew, for joining us. Thank you, Linda. And for being part of this. And I'll see you guys in another episode. I think the lesson that we have learned today is to be passionate about the things that you do and the things that you pursue to have a vision, to have a goal set towards where you want to go. And as Rick Warren wrote in his book, The Purpose Driven Life, without God, there is no purpose. Without purpose, there is no meaning. And without meaning, there is no significance or hope. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time on Ride Along.